In Poland, there are so many myths and legends that are too often not mentioned in conventional lore and mythos. But in this video, I wanted to cover the mythical creatures of the Tatra Mountains of Poland. Some of these legends do bear similarities to those of the other countries of the world, which make one wonder that these phenomena span the world over many centuries, translated into similar but slightly translated conceptionalities of our world's many lands and peoples and cultures. So I'll begin with the nine mythical creatures of Polish lore and legend that might have somehow been influenced by them. Nevertheless, the mystery of the Tatra Mountains and its creatures of legend continue to hold secrets that they possibly may never reveal. For as long as anyone can remember, mountains have excited the human mind, its capabilities and creative powers. They stimulate human imagination by bringing before the eyes unusual, infinitely varied images that can't be encountered elsewhere. When you look from a peak or a pass on a rainy stormy day, when the processions of mists wander through the valleys, ravines, into meadows with broken rocks, how many apparitions, shapes, figures and scenes can you see there? In the fairy tale world of the Tatra Mountains, Tet Mayer describes a number of mythical beings conjured by the imagination of the Tatra Highlanders. Phantasmagorical beings which, according to legend, used to inhabit the Tatra Mountains in fairy tale times. We begin with what is definitely one of the Tatra Mountains' most prominent mythical beings, the King of Snakes. It's a monster from a popular Tatra legend that was published in numerous iterations. The King of Snakes was a giant snake with a crown on its head, whose henchmen, the Black Knights, plundered Tatra villages and kidnapped young women. Eventually, the monster was challenged by the valiant hero, Perlowitz, who was conceived quite curiously after his mother had eaten a magical pearl. After a number of adventures, Perlowitz managed to defeat the King of Snakes and banished it and the Black Knights to underground caves. The snakes had their king. It was so huge that it could coil around a large crag. Its scales shone with every color, and on its head there was a golden comb, a crown. Oftentimes people would see the king of snakes as it warmed itself in the sunshine. Its entire body would sparkle then, looking like a rainbow lying on a rock. Like the king of snakes, our next mystical being is also a huge animal. A giant monstrous fish inhabited the Tatra Mountains' iconic lake, Morski Oko, one of the most picturesque spots in the region. Like the King of Snakes, our next mythical being is also a huge animal. According to the Tetmayer, a giant monstrous fish inhabited the Tatra Mountains' iconic Lake Morski Oko, one of the most picturesque spots in the region. In Lake Morski Oko, there was to be a huge fish with a ram's head, which snatched black sheep. This fish was to have a giant diamond in its head, between the eyes. I know that the late Wojtek Samak, whom I knew as a child, shot at this fish. It ought to be added, though, that Tet Mayer goes on to speculate that this monster might have in fact been an otter. Someone could have misinterpreted the sight of an otter swimming through Morski Oko as a monster, and that's perhaps how the story of the Morski Oko fish originated. Another mythical being living in a Tatra water body, Ted Mayer, writes that underneath Bassani Rock is a pond where a unique duck resides. Each year this duck lays a single golden egg. However, nobody has ever managed to reach this pond. The impressive Bassani Rock lies in Kosciuszko Valley and is a dozen or so meters high. You can indeed find a cave at its base, partially filled with water from which a stream flows. The cave is linked to a couple of other Tatra myths too. Some say that long ago a group of outlaws stored their golden loot there. So it appears that precious eggs might not be the only treasures hidden in Bassani Rock. Also, according to a popular legend, the cave in Bassani Rock is where the so-called sleeping knights reside. These knights are in a state of eternal sleep waiting for the right time to come to the aid of Poland. To honor this legend, 
In 1896, the sculptor Julius Beltowski carved a sleeping knight in the rock above the entrance to the cave in question. It's still visible today. It ought to be added though that the different version of the legend of the sleeping knights places their cave somewhere in the Tatra Mountains, Mount Giavot. Another mythical Tatra being linked to water, the Planetnik, was a daemon that could control rain, hail and weather in general. Ted Mayer calls it one of the most interesting and fantastic Highlander fantasies. There were multiple Planetniki, the plural form of the daemon's name, and they were typically imagined as men in straw hats and coats dripping with water. A Planetnik would drag clouds across the sky and have bags filled with hail, which he could scatter across the earth. This daemon could be either malicious or friendly, depending on its relationship with particular humans. If a Planetnik disliked a certain village, he could destroy the crops with hail. On the other hand, the daemon would protect those that he considered his friends. Occasionally, a Planetnik would come down from the skies and spend time among people. In the fairy tale world of the Tatra Mountains, Tetmayer tells a charming story about a Planetnik that comes to live at a water mill and is regularly given food by one of the mill's workers, Sobanik. In return for this hospitality, the daemon always warns Sobanik about upcoming rainy weather. Eventually, the Planetnik leaves the mill and goes back to his business of dragging clouds through the sky. Before departing, he warns his host about a particularly dangerous cloud that will one day come over the mill, allowing Sobanik to take precautions. Whereas a Planetnik could be either malicious or friendly, our next being was strictly evil. A Jiwazona was a malevolent female daemon that would kidnap newborn babies and young women. Ted Mayer writes that there were numerous Jiwazoni, the plural of Jiwazona, in the Tetra Mountains. On mounds, in burrows, on streams, and in mountain pastures, gullies, sat the Jiwazoni. They walked about naked, were similar to women, very ugly, hairy, and had loose hair, and eyes that shone like oil lamps. On their heads they wore red hats, or wreaths of buttercup flowers. Jiwazoni would bed evil people not only by kidnapping babies and women, but also by stealing. These daemons were known to pilfer all sorts, like musical instruments, potatoes and beer. They would also suck the milk out from farm animals like cows and sheep. Jiwazoni were dangerous, but they had a significant weakness. They were afraid of bell flowers. You could ward them off by holding these flowers in your hand, or by entering an area, such as a meadow, where the bell flowers were growing. Tetmayer calls these daemons a completely original product of Highlander imagination. Another evil apparition that looked like a monk would kidnap young women and carry them off to the Tatra precipices. According to Ted Mayer, the monk would show itself in the mountains just before there was a flood in the foothills. Sometimes people wandering through the Tatra mountains would see the monk in the mist hovering over the valleys and lakes. On examination of this phenomenon, the monk appears to be linked to an optical illusion known as the Brock Inspector. Here's how this curious visual phenomenon is described by Encyclopedia Britannica. The apparently enormously magnified shadow that an observer casts when the sun is low upon the upper surfaces of the clouds that are below the mountain upon which the observer stands, the apparent magnification of size of the shadow is an optical illusion. The phenomenon is often observed on mountain peaks, but is recorded in literature with special reference to the Brocken, a peak in the Harz Mountains in Germany. Interestingly, in Poland, the Brocken specter is itself sometimes referred to as a monk, so perhaps the story from the mountains of the entity seen in the clouds of the mist is rooted in this optical phenomenon. It's worth adding that according to Polish legend, if a mountain traveler sees the monk, or the Brock Inspector, they will end up dying in the mountains. You can dispel this curse though, if you keep going, and make sure you see a monk two or more times. After that, your mountain journeys will be safe. The aforementioned evil apparition isn't the only mythical entity 
linked to the monkhood in the fairy tale world of the Tatra Mountains. Ted Mayer also writes about a ghost of a monk that used to come out from a tree trunk. On Mount Sentiers, there was a huge tree trunk from which a ghost in the shape of a monk wearing white robes and a hood came out at night. When his feet reached the ground, he was as small as a white mushroom, but he grew quickly and became as tall as a young spruce in a matter of moments. We ought to mention here that Mount Sentiers lies in the Gorse Mountains, located about 30 kilometers to the north of the Tatra Mountain. It seems that Tet Mayer included a belief linked to the former mountain range in a book about the latter one due to the proximity of the two regions. The Mount Sentier's ghost is said to have been the spirit of a monk who had abandoned his monastery and committed a mortal sin. After dying at the hands of a band of outlaws, his ghost was condemned to remain on earth in atonement for the clergyman's transgressions. The said spirit appeared rarely and never harmed any people it encountered. One day, a pious man came across a specter who shouted at it, Let every soul praise the Lord. To that, the monk's ghost replied, I praise him as well. After that, the spirit disappeared and never showed itself again. Like the Mount Sentier's ghosts, the three deaths would also appear at nighttime. This mythical threesome roamed through the wilderness of the Tatra Mountains region. They were feared because they would force people to dance. If the three deaths caught you, you had to dance with them all night long among the wild bushes and juniper shrubs. This dance was said to be highly unpleasant as it left the unwilling dancer exhausted almost to the point of death. Not to mention that by the end of the night the poor dancer's shoes and clothing would be ruined from all the movement. During their hellish dance the three deaths would sing a song. People would observe the three deaths from afar out of nervous curiosity. Wherever the threesome went, somebody was bound to die. Unfortunately, Tet Mayer doesn't provide a description of what the three deaths looked like. In conclusion, the Tatra werewolves weren't much different from their counterparts elsewhere, being people who, due to a curse, would occasionally transform into a violent part werewolf, part human creature. This curse was a form of punishment for severe crimes. A person transformed into a Tetra werewolf would specifically still have a body of a human, but the head of a wolf. Ted Mayer gives a curious description of how a human underwent the change into a Tetra werewolf. When the time comes for such a human werewolf to be transformed, they go on to a stump of a cut tree, jump from there, make a somersault into the air, and turn into a werewolf. Tetra werewolves were feared as they would attack and even kill humans and farm animals. In the fairy tale world of the Tatra Mountains, Ted Meyer also writes about a couple of other mythical Tatra beings. These include the blood-sucking demons Stersgoni and the female demons Boginki, which were prone to pranks. If you're ever in the Tatra Mountains, you never know. Perhaps you'll be able to safely spot some of the fantastic entities mentioned in this article.